Hi my name is Matt, welcome to uh, Pony Power and we're now going to the second part of the Gearbox um, mini series if you want to put it that way and we're going to look about it into um, selector forks and selector drum and uh, how this works in relationship to a gearbox. So I've removed this one because this kind of complicates things a bit for this demonstration um, and I've also removed uh, this gear um, just so you can get a so you can basically see what's happening. So I'm going to bring you in a bit close. I've had to prop it just off the floor, not off the bench, um, with this wire brush handle, just so that the um, output shaft isn't touching. And it's trying to turn the engine around. So I'll bring you a little closer, and I'll show you the basics of the actual movement in the gearbox, and then we'll pull out this selector drum, and I'll show you um, some of the uh, design aspects and all the rest of it of um, the selector drum. Right, so let's right, cross so on. I've brought you in right close, so you can kind of see a bird's eye view. Of, um, or kind of see what I see of what's going on. So I've dotted the two gears just so you can kind of see the rotation. Um, so at the moment we're pretty much one to one. As you can see there. Like that. Now I must say that if you take the selector drum out and just put the two gears in, the input and the output shaft into your box, you try and turn it, it's not going to it might turn a bit and then stop. That isn't broken, that isn't a fault. That's because all the gears and all the dogs have fallen down, so you're trying to engage two or three gears at different ratios. So basically what's happening is, is the selector drum, as it's turning, has channels in and um, grooves inside, and these little nubs, these little dogs here, um, follow that groove, and that groove goes up and down, you'll see that when I pull it out, but basically this just moves backwards and forwards to follow that groove. Um, and basically on the end of your selector drum you have a ratchet, so when you click down it clicks and then stops to a position like that, and it clicks again, stops to a position, clicks again, stops to a position. When you hit first gear, that's what you hit, and you actually, there's actually a, a stop. And then when you hit fifth gear, the weight of the gears is making it hard to turn. There we go. So that's fifth gear. Um, is that fifth gear? I don't bloody know. <laughs> it's hard, like I say, even for even if you know how it works, it's hard to see as it's actually um, as it's actually happening. But basically, all it does is it just moves one fork, um, uh, one gear in to engage that one, and moves a right to engage another gear to engage that one. What I'll try and do is I'll try and um, slot this um, third one in just to give you a proper demonstration of how the gear should work and you'll be able to see um, the rotation change. The reason why you'll see the rotation change is because this gear is locked to the shaft. So whatever the shaft rotates we'll see it here. Uh, and because this is a freewheeling gear it'll just follow what this one is kind of I've uh, just removed the input shaft just to show you. You can see as you turn this, you can see in there where the dog should go in this bottom gear. You can see how the gears move, that's how it lifts out. So you've got quite a bit of movement there. If you go the other way, that's now moving this top gear, which would lock into the gear at the top. You won't move the shaft, that's just because it's not all. But there you can see a nice movement of that's in between, that's that's this gear in the middle not locking the bottom one or the top one. So that's that bit there. If you can hit click it goes there. So that's a stationary position which is not engaged either side. But that, that position there is it locking that gear. So it's locking in. Like that. Right, now I've got the other shaft in, uh, the other selector fork. And what I'll try and do is I'll try and find neutral could be on end I should actually put that back gear back on actually so what I'll do is is that the right way? no that's the right way right so we'll mark the spot there and the spot there just so you can see it turning So 
God knows what gear that's in. It's not first. Ah, here's a good thing you can see. If you can look in this gap, you can look how this gear is spinning, but the dogs are spinning at a different speed. That's because that gear isn't selected. So, I know that that's first. See how that dropped into there? Now when I turn it, the dogs there will engage. Now it's a bit floppy because there's no power applied. But if I... There you see, if I put any pressure on it, them gears lock now. So that's first gear. So that... That's first. Well, that's first. There. Because this is locked into, and this is first gear. So that's first. Neutral is there. See, I can hold the shaft still. Put a dot on the shaft so you can see. That's neutral. See, spinning the shaft. That shaft's not missing, moving. So then that is second. See, even if I hold the shaft. And then, like I say, gra gravity is kind of working against me here. Come on. Anyway, that's second. There's third. That's fourth, and that was this shaft moving, if you saw that move. And that's fifth. So what I'll do is, we'll go from fifth down to fourth, and I'll show you from this side so you can see the selector forks moving. So, that's fifth. If we click it that way, That fork dropped, that's fourth, this one comes up and this one moves, this is third which is a pain, there we go, that's third, come on you sod. There we go, that second, you can see the, the fork move. See that go up. And that is first when the gear drops down. There we go. So you can see there, you see that instant action. That's going from first to neutral. So I can hold that shaft still. And that's neutral. And then second. So there's, there's neutral. There's second, which is dropping this bottom fork. You can hardly see the movement. There we go. That's it, lock it in. Can't hold that shaft still, the whole thing turns. There you can probably see third there, you saw that move. Fourth, which is this one, which is a bit obstructed. And, and then fifth, which is this one. I'll try and this one. This fork here. See that move? And that's basically it. So what we'll do is, we'll pull out the pins. These are basically just the, the shafts that the um, forks ride, uh, ride across. So basically this is all it is, it is a channel. If there's your stop and that's first, set neutral's about there. You see where neutral is? Neutral's on the edge of this dropping down into second and then up into third and then basically all the way back round again. The reason why this one is all the way around and has no stop is you only need one and two stops. That is the entire movement of the drum. That's all is needed for all five gears. This bit here from there all the way to there which is around oh, 240 degrees at a push at a guess. It's about 120 that angle, so yeah, 240. 
The reason why this is the same all the way around and there's more bumps than this one is because this also does the other fork on this on this side. You can see that this one and this one both ride off this bottom passage where the top one is only so basically this only has to do one, it only has to move it, engage it once because it's only got dogs on one side, where the other two have got dogs on both sides. If you had a six gear, uh, this dog would have another drop, so you'd have a drop, a, a, an engagement and a disengagement. Um, sorry, <laughs> an engagement and a disengagement. Uh, this drum is cast iron, it is hollow for lightness. Um, it's cast iron because it needs to be strong, it needs to be a uh, good wearing material. Um, and like I say, your ratchet goes on there, which is a spring and a claw ratchet, which we'll get down to in another video. Uh, that's all um, mechanisms which we'll get to. But basically that's all this thing does, is it, you know, these two forks just see one side, so it just engages where they go. So now we're changing the bottom one, and then you move across, and now we change the bottom one, and then the top one. And then on this side it just follows the, um, again, about 120 degrees, the opposite of this. Um, so, to be quite honest, you can actually draw a graph out or a, a kind of like a table out of what's engaging where and how it's moving, and then they just get that graph and just wrap it over 360 degrees. Um, so, the actual forks themselves are literally forks. You do get a bit of wear there, you can see in the light, it's just where it's hitting the gear. Um, and it's basically, like I say, again, it's steel. And it's just got this engagement dog here, and then just the fork that basically just cups the gear and slides it up, uh, slides it left and right. So that's basically it. It is as simple as that. Like I say, there's not much to it. Trying to get your head around one of these first time, you're looking at it going, "What the hell is going on?" But um, if you don't understand that first and second are usually opposite each other, then it, it kind of gets weird because you think, "Oh, that's gear one, two, three, four, as the sit, but they're not." Right. So that's it for uh, selector drums. Um, next we'll move on to clutches, which isn't part of the gearbox, that's a separate thing altogether, so it'll be uh, not part of this series. Right, see you in a bit.